How did India change me? It fried me to a crisp. I turned into a little crispy strip of bacon here. Many travelers coming to India aren't looking for the typical relaxing vacation. It's not just about drinking margaritas all day or having all you can eat buffets or kicking your feet up and looking at the ocean. Many travelers who come to India are looking for an experience. to immerse themselves in a diverse, historic, and unique culture. And I know before I came to India, I was thinking, how is this experience going to change my life? If you're wondering if traveling in India is going to change you, in this video I'm going to share what I've learned after traveling and living here for over a year and a half. And also, I reached out to some friends who've traveled here to get a diverse perspective on does traveling in India change? Well, I can definitely say I think cows are more cute now. The guest is God. This is a marketing slogan in India, but it comes from the Upanishads. There's a passage that reads, Be one for whom the mother is God. Be one for whom the father is God. Be one for whom the teacher is God. Be one for whom the guest is God. I'd like to interrupt this video quickly to invite you to subscribe to our channel. I share India travel tips, travel videos, and I'd love to have you a part of our community. Many Indians take great pride in their hospitality. And if you're staying at an Airbnb, if you're staying at a homestay, if you're staying at some hotels, if you're meeting Indian travelers, you're going to run into the warm, welcoming hospitality of Indians. Namaste is a typical hello here in India, and it's such a beautiful way to greet people. It means I bow to the divinity in you. Welcoming guests in India is actually a five-step process. First, you need to take care of the smell. So light incense or provide a sweet smelling fragrance. Use lights or lamps to light your space in a beautiful way so that everything can be seen to relax your guest. Food, fruits, juices, and sweets are usually offered. When you go to a hotel, they'll often offer you a glass of fruit juice. Rice, it's a symbol of being connected and is put on the forehead. And flowers, you might see hotels put garlands over guests' heads as they arrive, and that comes from this tradition. I'd like to think that when I go back to the USA, I will have absorbed and learned some of these lessons about how to provide good hospitality to friends, family, and guests. Ian says, it made me fall in love with people again. Never met so much kindness. Indians give so much more than they take. India can also teach you patience. The population in 2020 is projected to be 1.38 billion people. It's the second most populated country in the world. India has 411 people per square kilometer whereas the USA has 33 people per square kilometer. With all these people comes more traffic, more opportunities to, to bump into people and to have interactions that may be less than pleasant. I know that when I'm riding in a taxi or on a trip someplace, it's so impressive the way that some of the drivers handle these interactions with people. My aunt says, I hope that I will remember how Indians treat each other with respect for what it takes people to make it through their day. I hope if I ever get to drive again, I'll remember to yield the right of way and not to get angry if people don't follow the rules. The people take such pride in their food as well. In America, you can go into a grocery store and find so many ready-made foods, things in cans, things in packages, things in the frozen food aisle. It's much more difficult to find a big, huge grocery store where you can buy your pre-packaged and pre-made foods. 
you go into a restaurant at lunchtime, you'll get a typical meal like a tali, and each restaurant will do it a little bit differently, and they'll vary it day by day with different salads, different sauces, different staples and breads. It's really beautiful to see how much love and care and pride people take in food, although it also can cause a problem because it seems like the Indian chefs that I've met love to see you eat more and more and will continually encourage you. Yummy. Have more, have more, eat, eat, eat. India also can make you aware of the cost of things. For instance, the cost of living in the U.S. is 68% higher than India. In the U.S., the average cost of rent in Manhattan is $2,098 per month for a one-bedroom apartment. In San Francisco, it's $3,500 per month. In a small city like Des Moines, Iowa, it can be $700 per month. Whereas here in India, I pay $167 a month to see if I'm getting a good deal or not. Check the video. A flat here in beautiful India. Some people say I'm paying way too much. Others in bigger cities or more expensive cities say it's a great price. I've been in the homes of local friends whose house was passed down from generation to generation and they don't pay anything for their housing. The cost of food here is just a couple dollars. You can buy fresh vegetables and fresh fruits, rice, chapatis, or flatbreads. You can buy these things for such good prices. Whereas even in the West, many people make much more money, yet find it more difficult to survive because the prices can be so high. Sergio says India taught him a lot, mainly how to be happy with less, and what is quality time? Taj Mahal was built between 1632 and 1648. Agra Fort was built between 1565 and 1573. The temple in the city that I live in was built in the 9th century. The erotic temples at Kajaraho were also built in the 9th century. Scholars believe Varanasi is the oldest living city in the world and is 3,000 years old. The Empire State Building in New York was built in 1930. The Golden Gate Bridge was built in 1933. Living in India has given me such a perspective on how old the world is, how many people have came before me, how many people will probably come after me. The United States is so young in comparison. The United States is like a little baby and India is like this wise old man sitting on the porch. Being in India is easier to feel how old the world really is. Shashank says it's made him aware of the privileges he enjoys, which has made him more humble, kind, helpful, and compassionate. Another thing that's changed for me is the way that I view prices and buying things. In India, so many prices are negotiable. I was in Agra and I really needed to get a shirt. I went into a store, the man tells me the shirt is 1,500. I'm like, whoa, that's way too high. I'm bluffing, I don't know how much that shirt costs. We get the price down to 1,000 rupees. And I'm feeling pretty good about myself. I'm thinking I'm a hard negotiator. I'm good at this. My mom and my aunt went to another store. They found the shirt for 500 rupees without any negotiation. <laughs> Ugh. My point is just that. Negotiating in India happens all the time. Almost every day I'm making a purchase at a market, buying some fruit, buying some vegetables. I'm negotiating some. And it's good practice. Many people in the West, many people in America don't have that practice and feel uncomfortable negotiating. Heather says she thinks India forces you to get over yourself a bit. Relax, open your heart, stop being so attached, feel. Religion and spirituality are such a part of the culture. I know that my aunt was very inspired by how much the people of India make religion a part of their daily lives. It's inspiring to me to see people who are devoted to something that's much larger than themselves. It's baffling to me how they can understand Hinduism. It's so confusing to me. 
I think it's cool how it's socially acceptable to devote yourself to your spirituality and focus on that to the exclusion of everything else in your life. Indra Neal says travels to India have always provided her with a sense of belonging in the humanistic perspective and firm mental grounding. South India during the summertime is so hot. As I'm making this video, I am baking. It's like nine o'clock in the morning. I'm from a colder place Burr. in the US. It would snow in December and pretty much there would be snow on the ground until April or May. I hope that when I go back, all the temperatures don't feel freezing cold to me. I hope I don't get too acclimated to this hot weather. Look at me, I think I lost 10 pounds making this video. Rachel says she feels much more open-minded and has a lust for seeing the rest of the world. Another thing that might change me about India are how people treat their families. I look at these small homes and you can see large families all living together. I talk to travelers, I talk to locals about where I'm from, why I'm here, do I have family here, am I married, do I have a wife? And it's quite clear to me how important family is in everyone's lives here. An anonymous friend says, the beauty and struggle of being so connected to family, the vast wisdom of the ancients, the presence of mind required to just exist, the vast gap in awareness of what's possible by way of sensory stimulus, and more. Another thing that's had a big impression on me is seeing people who are very poor. People coming up to me in the street asking for money. Even friends, knowing what my gardener makes in a month. These small homes made out of cement, no AC. Women coming up to me with babies and asking me to help them buy milk. You read how this is a scam, how the women are renting babies, how there is a system of beggars in a city who pay to the boss beggar and how most of these people aren't gonna see much of that money that you give. And by giving, you're giving an incentive to have more beggars out there. And the terrible things that can happen to someone who's trying to beg, people being disfigured, it's really, heartbreaking. Verena says travel has given her a thicker skin, made it easier to get in touch with people, and taught her to say no. One of the people I asked said that India has given her a thicker skin. India has made me realize that this whole concept that you can be whatever you want to be is not true. This whole concept that you could be the president of the United States is not true, especially for a lot of the people in India, but also in America. It also can be a harmful concept. I know that the, some of the people here, they're doing work to get by and it's very difficult for them. I know that the work that I'm doing too is difficult. To make a living is difficult. To have these concepts that I can be whatever I want to be or that my life is not going to be without challenges. Maybe that's just the way that I interpret it. But I know that those thoughts have caused me a lot of pain because I'm like, well, why aren't I like the president? Or why don't I have millions of dollars? Or why don't I have these other things that I would want? A big house or living in India has just made me realize, has just opened my eyes to just how hard making a living on a daily base is for people. Ami had a message for travelers that India is very culturally and geographically diverse, so travel far and travel further, and that he's sure it will surprise you. Another thing that might change me is just how important it is to take care of where I live. One thing that has been hard in India is that there, there is a lot of trash d deposited around. And I mean, not here, this place is beautiful, look at this. But in some places you'll find just a lot of trash. And when I was a kid, we would walk down the road near our house and we would each have a garbage bag and we would just pick up trash that random strangers and people driving past had thrown. And when I was a kid, I didn't like that. That wasn't like a fun time. That wasn't something I was looking forward to. But now I realize wherever I settle down, how important it is to really take care of where you live. And I'm thinking about trash because that's something that's difficult to see here, but there are many ways you can take care of where you live. One thing that Indians do really well is just by being and giving time to their spiritual beliefs and things that are beyond their daily life, beyond the daily concerns we all share on how to get food, how to keep our relationships happy and content and loving. But to look beyond that, 
on a daily basis. That's another element of care that I think Indians and the country of India has really taught me. Another thing about travel in general that changes you, it makes you appreciate home. I know that when my mom was here, having my mom and my aunt together, I was thinking about our times in the future when we're gonna be sitting back in Michigan in the United States, having a cup of tea and laughing and, and remembering fondly what our time in India was like. It makes me think of just the peace and the quiet and the nature where I grew up in Michigan, where there are just beautiful forests, there are beautiful lakes. The people are very nice and very sweet. And I think travel in general will do that to you. It will make you happy and grateful for where you grew up in this world, for where you were born in this world, for where the majority of the people that you know live. Hello. Thanks for watching. Andre. Check the description for more videos about India. Hello.